Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Seeing that I've got control surfaces all covered, let's get to work on the fuselage. Okay, before we begin, uh, for those who saw the video a couple videos ago, two videos ago, uh, where my new acquisition was the Fokker D7, um, I made a decision on what I wanted to do with the engine and uh, got hold of my fine friends over at Motion RC, put the order in, and then this morning hopped in the car and took that long five minute drive over to Motion to pick it up. What we've got here, and hopefully I won't drop it, is we've got the NGH, the GF38, the four stroke 38cc gas engine. Uh, and I decided I wanted to go gas uh, just because I like gas on the big stuff. Don't not, it's, I don't do glow anymore uh, on the big stuff. Um, I can do electric, but I'd rather go gas uh, just because I like the noise. Um, and with the World War I plane, I made the decision, and it was a pretty easy, easy decision to make. Uh, we were going four-stroke. I, I didn't want to spend the money and try to find a Fuji. Uh, so NGH, once again, uh, will fill the bill. So uh, anyway, yeah, so that's a little farther on down the road. I got to finish this stop first. Let's get back to work. All right, I'm just kind of getting a start on how I want to do the horizontal stabilizers on the underside part. I'm starting with the leading edge. Now, of course, it's upside down. I'm starting with the leading edge, and I'm coming across, and I don't know how well you can see it, it's got some poly tack underneath here and I've got it pushed through, forced through the, uh, the fabric. I'm going to go ahead and hit the rear side of it now and see how well I can get this to adhere the way I want it to. Because right now it's not agreeing 100%. That's just because I think the technique that I'm using right now, it'll probably end up changing somewhere very soon down the, lot, down the road. Okay, this is actually working out pretty good on this side now. Now I see I can get I can go ahead and as soon as it gets uh, properly attached as it wraps around the back side of this, um, I can go ahead and uh, just put some uh, nitrate dope around the outside so as soon as it goes ahead and sets up, I'll cut it, finish the wrap down, and then as soon as this is taken care of, I can go ahead and just very lightly uh, tauten it up a little bit. And I'm just trying to leave it so that up on the top, it's a little... Sorry about that. It's not soaking in and I'm not brushing it out. I'm leaving it so that it's just a, it's kind of sitting somewhat proud on the top of here. So I don't know how well you can see it. So if I come in and pull it down, you can see it gets pulled up in the weave and then just smooth it out. And then, like I said, this stuff in about 15 seconds, it's tacked up. Whereas the nitrate dope itself takes a couple minutes. Okay, this part's pretty much done. Okay, now what I'm going to do is just come around with some nitrate dope. And go ahead, and I want, I'm doing two things. I'm tacking it down a little bit better than it was. With the dope, and then I'm coming in and I'm making sure that the fabric that overhangs is getting nitrate dope on it so when it comes time for me to cut it it's not going to tear it's just going to come through with a uh, with a razor blade cut it and it'll be a nice true edge
All right, so while this side's tacking up, I'll go hit the other side. All right, now cutting, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. You can do it with a pair of scissors. Let's see if I can show you better on the other side. And then this is a, a Harry Higley, it's a trimmer that works really good on mylar and it'll work good on fabric if you do use the nitrate dope to go ahead and then lock the weave. And you can see it does come around, it does a very nice job. And I'll just do a little trim up with the scissors and then I can go ahead and get this wet and then bend it back over and then it's ready to shrink. And this is where you're going to kind of fight with the with the nitrate dope in the fabric and this is where it gets all over your hands. This is this is the battle zone trying to get this stuff to stick. All right, this side's all locked down. Let me get the other side done and then we'll get out the iron and do a little shrinky dink. All right, what I'm doing now, the top is done. It was all put on. Everything's nicely overlapped and I wanna see, because I'm shrinking the top, it had a little bit of a down on it before and it still has it that way. So I need to snug up the top a little bit. I'm gonna just throw a little more heat on it and we just wanna get it close because I'm gonna have flying wires uh, on the tail. And through that, I can adjust a little bit of up and down. I don't know if you can see that little bit of a flex I'm putting in it. There's very little bit of tension to make that flex up and flex down. So I could take care of a little bit and I think I'm sitting I'm probably sitting about an eighth inch. So I'm going to go ahead and just snug this up just a little bit more. And once this is done, I'm going to go ahead and throw, uh, throw a couple coats of dope on it. Okay, everything is properly leveled out. I'm about a sixteenth of an inch. So that's, uh, I consider that good enough for where I'm at right now. Like I said, that stuff, uh, that can get straightened out um, with the flying wires on the back. I just wanted to make sure that when this thing was glued together, um, and put on because it sat it glued it to this to the back of the of the fuselage for probably I don't know two months since I've been able to get down and start covering. Um, so it it induced a little bit of warp in itself, and uh, I was not that concerned with it, and I knew that I can get that straightened out uh, before painting. So this is the first coat. Um, I went around the edge when I got done putting it on before I trimmed it and made sure that I had good ad adherence to the wood itself. What I'm doing right now is I'm doing the, an extra, another coat on the wood and on the fabric. Um, the problems you have with fabric is when you paint it, anything where the fabric itself is attached to wood. If you don't have it if you don't have at least two or three coats of nitrate dope on the wood itself before you cover it, um, your first three coats plus three or three or more coats um, on the top, most of it's going to get pulled right through the fabric into the wood. And that's where you're going to uh, notice that you're going to see when you spray paint it, the, the paint itself is not going to sit on top of the fabric. It's going to get pulled into the wood. So you're going to have a really lousy looking paint job. So it's better just to be uh, 
extra careful and make sure you get everything taken care of before you put the fabric on the top. All right, this part is done. Next step, sorry about the lights, the next step. See, it's sitting outside, I gotta get the bottom covered first, just like a regular RC plane when you're covering with whatever kind of material, you do the bottom and then you do the sides and the top. The way this plane is gonna get done, this fuselage, it's gonna be the, uh, the guaranteed the bottom. So I'll do this part first, I'll do the rear first, I'll do the little front piece uh front there second so i mean so this will be separate this will be separate back here and then it comes the time to decide how i want to do the top i'd like to do the top i'd like to do it all in one the problem i'm gonna have is where it drops down because of this angle drops down so this is going to be the deciding factor. Do I want to, and I may do it, I'll probably do it. Um, I'll take some fabric and uh, cut a very long straight edge. And I've got a four foot yardstick. Well, it's not a four foot yardstick. It's a four foot, it's a four foot stick. <laughs> um, it's, it's for when I did some drywall work. Um, so what I can do is this will be long enough to span the whole length of the fuselage. I can bring some of the fabric out, put it down, um, and then I'll, when I'm cutting this piece out so it's a straight line, I'll put some nitrate dope down and go ahead and just do a section, oh, about yay wide, about an inch and a half wide. In this, I'll put this down and I'll split it between the two. That way I've got a straight edge that can go from all the way back here all the way on up to the front up there and uh as you can see right here on the line so i can run it from the back all the way up to the front and then just cap the top over and do the same thing just have it come down overlap this by about an eighth inch from here and down to here so that's probably what i'm going to do so let me at least get the bottom done and then uh, uh we'll flip it on its side and i'll get the side pieces cut and i will show you how i do it 